Hello and welcome to Bureau Bites, a regular pod bite bringing you news from Vietnam and the region. I'm Matt Cowan, the Bureau Chief and your host. Thank you for joining me for this 10 minute bite. Well, it's finally happened. After Ho Chi Minh City officials at a meeting last Thursday considered the closure of clubs and bars and karaoke venues in District 1 as a measure to contain COVID-19, they've done it. Saturday night at 6pm saw the closure of venues in District 1. Already reeling from a decline in patronage due to concerns over the spread of the virus, the bars and clubs now have no choice but to comply and temporarily close until further notice. Following on from the decision, Ho Chi Minh City officials then announced late Saturday evening that the same was to be done in all districts and were to be closed from 6pm last Sunday evening until further notice, effectively shutting down Saigon's nighttime entertainment. Restaurants, however, have been spared for now, although some restaurants in the city are requesting that diners bring with them identification, including documentation of any recent travel to known COVID-19 hotspots domestically and internationally. So what impact is this having on the hospitality industry in Saigon and what of its future? I spoke to Chris Thompson, editor-at-large at Harper's Bazaar Vietnam and who regularly reports on bars and restaurants across Vietnam. Chris Thompson, thank you for joining Bureau Bites. Good morning, Matt. It's a pleasure. What immediate impact is the decision to close bars and clubs going to have on business in the hospitality industry? Well, I think clearly it's not good news. And sadly, there's going to be some obvious repercussions and that a number of outlets are likely to close down, hopefully only on a, on a temporary basis. But Matt, I think one of the trends that we're going to see accelerated around this time is that trend around home delivery. And we're probably going to see almost every restaurant now offering a, a home delivery option. You know, you've probably noticed in the last couple of days, outlets like Godmother Bake and Brunch have now announced that they're going to be offering that home delivery service. And and without wanting to sort of offer some breaking news, a friend of ours down at Ann Ann, I think is even looking to be uh, rolling that out later on this week. So I really think we're going to see more home delivery. And I also feel that as part of that, if some of these you know, really successful restaurants are going to go down the line of home delivery. They're probably going to look to put their own stamp on that. And we might see some innovation around that. We might see something a little bit more interesting around the packaging, around the social media, around how they communicate with their customers. So I think home delivery in the next few weeks is going to be something which really rises in prominence. Why have restaurants been spared for now? We can never be exactly sure about that, but I think it's down to something around the the number of people there. So restaurants probably at the moment would still be classed as a, as a small gathering. You know, I was out at uh, Ox on Friday night with Nyo Tan Hoa, you know, Vietnamese master chef. And, you know, as we went in, we were tested as we went in. So managed to pass the test, which was good news. Um, and they the, they're able to offer hand sanitizer and so on. So I feel like maybe the government feel like there's a little bit more control there. But there's also something around what I'm hearing more and more. There's a phrase, I've never heard of it until last week, around social distancing. So I guess if you're in a, if you're in a restaurant and you sat down, you're not in that much close proximity to the other people there. Um, and finally, Matt, I think there's something around necessity because of course we've all still got to eat haven't we but we don't potentially have to go for a massage or have to go to karaoke or the late night bar stroke nightclub so i think there's i think for those three factors that's why we'll hopefully see restaurants continue to stay open in your opinion what's the long-term impact going to be on saigon's hospitality industry yeah i know this might sound a bit mad at the moment because everybody's feeling you know feeling really down a lot of people not feeling so positive but i feel like in the long long term this might actually be a good thing 
um, this pandemic has brought the debate around food hygiene and food safety and even personal hygiene, hygiene in general, front and centre. And that's probably got to be a good thing in future. Um, certain restaurants on on the back of this as well, they might need to consider operating in a more efficient manner in a more efficient manner. And you might see uh, their approach to staff, for example, a little bit more efficient. Maybe more staff are going to be able to, you know, multitask and do different tasks within the restaurant. So we might see that. And I think just going back to what I mentioned earlier, I think restaurants are going to be, and maybe hospitality in general, are going to probably be working harder to engage with their customers on a social media perspective. Uh, that issue around customer retention is going to become more and more important. And maybe restaurants and hospitality outlets will value their customers even more off of the back of this. So we'll probably see a tighter relationship between the customer and the hospitality areas moving forward. So what options are there for people who still want to dine out or go for a drink? Well, this is actually quite a difficult question because I, I, I can confirm, having been out on the weekend, that all the restaurants are still open. But there's a really grey area at the moment um, around those type of places. For example, a, a cocktail bar, a resto bar, what, where you might go and eat and you'd also get a cocktail are they open or are they not open? So, for example, over the weekend, Layla was open. Layla's one of the busiest cocktail bars in town, but they're also classed as an eatery. They offer quite a wide selection of food. But at the same time, I noticed that Cui, uh, again, one of the most famous um, icons of hospitality, was not open. So it's a bit of a tricky one, and I think it's something where we've almost got to to check on a you know on a daily basis as to who who is open and, and who isn't. It sounds like this may may change quite a bit over the coming weeks. That was Chris Thompson, Harper's Bazaar Vietnam, editor-at-large in Ho Chi Minh City. Well, that's all for this Bureau Bite. If you liked what you heard, please review the Bureau podcast wherever you get your podcasts. This has been Matt Cowan. Until our next Pod Bite, keep up to date with what's happening in Vietnam and the region by going to thebureauasia.com and Facebook and Instagram at The Bureau Asia.